Hello, and welcome back to the dining room. Don't panic, it's not a camera. <laughs> it's a camera accessory, but it's not a camera. In case you haven't figured it out, I'm probably not gonna be buying another camera for a good long while. I have the A camera I've, I've always wanted, which is the Sony A7C. I've got an overhead camera. I'm using the Sony ZV-1. Not completely overhead because if you watched last week's video, you know I had a lot of trouble lining things up. This way I don't really have to line things up because both cameras are basically aimed right here. Oh, and I still have the ZV-E10. And the ZV-E10 is going to participate in today's video by being the camera that I use with this new accessory that I have purchased. See, I haven't done it very often where I walk around with a camera, like vlogging kind of thing. If you've seen any of the videos where I've done that, you'll know why, because it, there's a lot of this. There's a lot of shake, there's a lot of wobble. Uh, in the one where I showed the farewell to a Stormtrooper when I walked around to show the damage, not only was there a lot of wobble, I even missed the shot. I, was, I wasn't even pointed at the right thing. But this is a gimbal, which will give me these smooth steady cam type shots for walking around, vlogging, doing those kinds of things. Yes, I don't do it that often, but if I had one of these, I guarantee I'm going to do it more often because it's going to look better. So what I have here is the Crane M3. And as its name implies, there was an M2 and there was an M1. June is the, is the company. Crane is the brand. So June has been making the cranes for quite some time. And the thing was, the original ones, the thing about gimbals is that they're either really big and heavy, if they're going to be for a normal size camera, or if they're little tiny and light, then you can only use them for like smartphones and GoPros and, you know, action cams. Well, I wanted one that I could use with the Sony A7C or ZV-E10. And this one is specifically rated. June has a website or a, a, a chart which shows all the cameras and lenses that it's been tested with and that they guarantee it will work with. And this camera and this kit lens is one of them. And the A7C and its kit lens is another one. So I know this will work. Oh, by the way, ZV-1 too, but yeah, we know. Now, there are three versions of the M3. This is the middle one. The, the lowest level one is just the gimbal, and that's like 369. This is 449, but they add a bag and a couple of accessories and things. And then, of course, there's the combo, which is the high-end one, which is like 649 which I didn't see any purpose of me having. And it had, all of these things will be linked down below so you can go to Amazon and look at them. Here's what you get. You get a little uh, quick start guide with button descriptions, etc. cetera. It, it's really, it's just a pamphlet as it were. And you get this lovely little bag. And the gimbal is, this is the carrying case. Again, comes with the 449 and 649 versions. If you get the 369 version, you don't get a case for it. But then, of course, most of you are, most people looking at this kind of thing are probably professional photographers or at least advanced amateurs and have camera bags. I, of course, do almost all my video shooting around my house. So I don't have a lot of portability, so I don't have a lot of camera bags. I, I got one last week, if you watched the video. And now I got one here. And by the way, uh, from everything I've read, this is a very nice bag. See, it's got the June logo on it. But what I need to do is open up, zip it all the way around here. And it opens like so. So there we have it. And in this little uh, compartment are all the accessories. We'll get to those in a minute. Here's a strap, I assume, for the bag. Underneath that, under a nice little Velcro thing. Oh, this is the tripod base for this. We'll be getting to that in just a minute. 
There's nothing over here, but there's another little compartment with, with Velcro that you can stick things under. And then with, undo this little Velcro strap. Oh, I'm sorry, there's two. There's one at the top, one at the bottom. This is the gimbal. It's about as tiny as a gimbal can be. I mean, look at this thing. Oh, look, it has a little, not really a peel. It wasn't really stuck to it. You can see this is a pretty fancy little thing, and we will get into it shortly. First, in order to use it at all, we're going to need what we call the quick release plate that you will use to attach the camera. And I have never used one of these before, so you're going to... Here is the quick release plate. See, it has a big screw that will attach to the mount, the tripod mount. And then it'll go through here, and then you see this thing will slide, slot in right there. We'll be getting back to that in a minute. We have a whole bunch of wires here, and this is for connecting the gimbal to your camera. Again, I, I, I'm not an expert yet, because I just got it, but apparently these will, the, the, the gimbal, when fully charged, has like eight hours of power in it, but with these little cables, you can connect it to your camera, and then the camera can pull power off of this to recharge its battery. So you can extend your camera battery with the gimbal's battery. And again, the gimbal has like an eight hour battery, and I don't know anybody's gonna be carrying the thing around for eight hours, so you could surely give up half of that to keep your camera going longer. I will doubt, probably not use this very often. Oh, also in here, you can't see, well, here, I'll open it up. This gimbal has a, a light, an LED light on it, so that if you're out vlogging around at night and, there's no, and it's dark, you can turn on this little light, which obviously will be pointed at your face when, when the camera is in the right position. And what these are, are little colored insert magnetic gels that you can use to change the color of that light to blue, well, I can't figure out how to get them open to show you, but essentially it's blue, red, and yellow, basically. See, they're stuck together because they're magnetic, and we have a blue, oh, I'm sorry, blue, yellow, red, and orange. So that these, these will magnetically attach to, to the LED light. Now, the LED light is also uh, multi, you can change the Kelvin, the, 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 you know, the temperature, so you can match it to, like if you're outdoors and it's incandescent, you can set it to a, a, a temperature that's a set pro appropriate for that. This is for, a, for a, your smartphone. If you're going to use this gimbal with a smartphone, here's your smartphone mount. I, of course, will not be doing that, so we don't need that right now. Yeah, this is the manual. And by the way, if they could have written it any smaller, again, not a bad little bag. And again, the gimbal fits right here very nicely and has little straps, little Velcro straps to hold it in. And installation. Well, the first thing I need to do, according to this uh, little quick start guide, is charge the battery in here with a USB-A to USB-C. Now, it does not come with the little, uh, this guy, the little plug. This is from one of the Sony cameras. It says Sony on the side. So I'm going to I'm going to pause and charge this up and then read the book so that we can come back and I can show you how to set up and balance a camera in the gimbal and then we'll I'll use the gimbal. We'll maybe even go outside and do do some real gimbal filming. But it's it's a pretty amazing little guy. By the way, not very heavy. It weighs it's about a pound, I think, pound and a half. I I Specs, specs next to my head somewhere. <laughs> now, if you get the pro version, the, the $669 one, it has a little thing that attaches here, which lets you plug a microphone in so you don't have to have a microphone on top of the camera, which for some cameras and some lens combinations could be, become problematic, as you'll see when we actually get to using it. But the version I got just comes with this little screw-on 
So it gives me a little more length. And by the way, one of the things you do with these kind of things is like you run along the ground and you know, shoot real low, or you can do like fake crane shots and lift them up. And there's all sorts of things you can do and this extra little grip, but more important, it is a tripod. So you can start like this kind of a video and then I could just reach over and off we go, we go sailing away. So it's a pretty cool little system and let me go charge it up and figure out how to install a camera on it and I will come back and show you what I have learned. Hello again. While the M3 was charging, I was reading the book and the booklet and, and the little book, which is still in the other room, and I watched a couple of videos, so I'm pretty sure I kind of understand what I need to do now. So to, to get your camera mounted and balanced on the gimbal, you will need this plate. You want the arrows on the, on the bottom of the plate point at the grip of your camera. You have to start it at the end here where it's a little wider. And then once you got it screwed in, you can slide it on down where it belongs, which is down here. And then you can screw it. One, one of the videos I watched said, and be sure to screw it in tight so it won't fall out. So apparently someone has had one of these fall out. Okay. So I've got this screwed fairly tightly. Ah, and then you're supposed to unlock. So that's one, two, three, four. Well, I don't seem to have unlocked anything at all. Oh, yes, I have. Okay. You're supposed to push this all the way to the right so that this will go in and lock. And it does. Okay. So I'm going to let this come down and hit here and then screw it on tight. Now, one of the more interesting videos, I can, and it makes sense, says you need to take off your lens cap and put your screen in the position you're going to want it in so, so that when you're balancing it, you don't want to get it all balanced. And then when you flip the screen out, have all of a sudden everything tip over. There are locks and latches. Oh, so apparently I was just working with the latches. The locks have a little lock symbol next to them. So there, that's unlocked. Okay, that's unlocked. And there, okay, there, now I got all, now I have them all unlocked. I need to lock that one back. I'm working with this one up here. So let's lock these other two, if I can find them. Where's the little lock? There it is. Okay. So you're trying to get this balance, see, so that it doesn't knock forward. This is very frustrating because if I latch that into place, now when I do that, it goes back that way. When I do that, you go back, it goes back to facing forward. Okay, that's this way. Now you also, yeah, the lock's underneath. There we go. Now that's unlocked. There's a little, uh, there's a little dot there showing you if you've got it lined up exactly right. And this one, I do not apparently. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I have these guys. Now, that's, th these were both the tilt axis. Then you do this one. Now we're doing this one down here. Well, let's turn this baby on. So you hold the power button for a couple seconds. And it comes up, there we go, June. And we go to balance. Then you should move it around the screen. It's all, they're all blue, a little yellow. So it's not perfectly balanced, but let's see if it's good enough. Let's go back. So see, there's an auto calibration. You see it shaking? Successful. So apparently I was well enough balanced. It's in pan follow mode, which apparently is the most commonly used mode. Okay. Should have balanced it with the camera on because the lens sticks out more. I am now in vlogging mode. Oh, and that's awfully close to my face. Yeah, and it's heavy enough that you're not going to want to go out much farther. But on the other hand, 
And now it's in lock mode, which means it, it's just going to try to stay in the same. Oh, now see if I lean it out a little. That's not a bad vlogging thing. Now, I'm not sure how long I can hold it. Well, I can. I tell you what. Let's go for a walk. And we'll see if we can use any of this foot. Well, it was a little dark right through here, so let's, uh... Yeah, now I've got, now I've got my, uh... light on. So that my face is in focus. Okay, I think I turned this light off now. Now I'm outside. Let me turn the camera around. Okay, I cannot see anything on the little screen back here. It is pitch black. What'd you think of that? I'm pretty impressed. So it's pretty easy to turn around. Walk around out here. Go back in the house. Turn on the. There you go. Put that back on. And we're back in the room where we started. All right, let's see how smooth I can do the transition. Standing to seated. That's not bad. And I've got my zebras on here so I can tell that I'm in focus and I'm well lit. Okay. So when you see me sitting in here, this is what I'm looking at. This is pretty cool. I don't know if you noticed the uh, M3 logo here on this on the on the armature here lights up. Okay, well that wasn't much of a test, but it clearly does what it's supposed to do. And I will turn it back around so that y'all can see the screen. Oh, I still have that out. That there we go. Triple tap. I was a little disappointed in the, the, how close it was, but I have a feeling that when I do this, I may end up using the A7C on this. It'll be harder to balance because it's heavier, but it should still fit. I'm not going to run you through every feature. You can get this from other channels. I just wanted to show you. I like the triple tap, the double tap to realign the triple tap to go into selfie mode. Hey. The triple tap turns it, you know, does a, does a, does a 180. And then if you've, if you've gotten off to one side and the double tap recenters. Now there's also a little uh, scroll button here that this is the, this is where I kind of fault this a little bit. They talk about how you can plug in the USB-C to USB-C. So I can plug the camera in to the, the gimbal. By the way, it's right here where my finger is pointing. Right here. 
That's, you can plug this in from there into the camera. However, that's only for charging these. Basically, with, with the M3, June wants to get you to buy these, these additional modules. They have an additional quick release plate for Sony cameras where it doesn't block the, uh, the battery compartment. So see right now, if I want to change batteries in here, I'm going to have to take that quick plate, the quick release plate off the bottom of the camera because it was crossing the battery compartment. But they have one, but that's, that's like $90. Now the whole thing is 360. So $90 for the quick release plate is a little outrageous. Well then they also, they used to do all the functionality with these little cables that you could run from here around to into your camera. Except now that the M, that was the M2 that did that. The M3 now they they have this uh, these Bluetooth modules that you plug into your camera, and then it controls it by Bluetooth, which would be great. Except a those Bluetooth modules are not available for most cameras. B I think they also cost like eighty to a hundred dollars. So I'm not a big fan of that. This is a work in progress. By the way, as a gimbal. It's fantastic. I mean, you, you just saw, I just did a quick little test, but I haven't, and I haven't seen the footage, but looking at the little screen, it looked like it was pretty, pretty buttery smooth. I'm not sure I have that much more to say about this gimbal. I am, uh, I'm relatively happy with this purchase. I should have saved the, uh, save 60 bucks, 60, 70 bucks, whatever the difference was. Again, look below. And I don't really think I need the bag, but, now that I've got it, I will probably keep this in the bag and then if I ever you know, go out. But when you have it up like this and I can hold it out from me, well, here, let me get... Yeah, I'm gonna have to play with this more and, and try the follow things. And what I bought it for was so I can do more walking around blogging kind of videos. I gotta stop doing this with my hand. Look. I, this camera my hand is huge because it's right by the lens and i think it's going to serve that purpose because by the way catalyst Cat catalyst browse i know i keep talking about how great it is but like a 10 minute clip can take 30 minutes to render so if you do a lot of walking around that's going to be a lot of time spending with your computer you know post-processing so it's going to add a lot to your time on the other end with the m3 i get most of the stability out of the gimbal and then there's not a lot of post-processing I'm, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of liking the smoothness. Well, again, it, it keeps slipping off me, but I think it's because of the the uh, the mode I have it in. I have it in pan follow, I think, and so it's only worried really about this way. And so when I move it this way, it, it's not. I need to try one of the other modes. Again, I don't know enough about this yet to really do anything. So I will report back later. But for now, that is the unboxing and initial setup and, and a camera balancing on the Zhiyun Crane M3, which is a pretty nice little device. I'm, I'm rather impressed. That's not bad. Well, y'all, you can see it's exactly like almost my arm's length away. And I, I will show you this view so you can see how far away that is. Now it's a bit heavy, so I, I wouldn't want to hold it like this for you know, long periods of time, but I could hold it for you know 10, 20 minutes. Relatively pleased. It's a it's a it's a good little gimbal. I don't know how what I'm doing with it, so give me some time. Let me practice with it, and I'll get back to you on what it's like and whether I like it or not. But Again, the whole point is now I can do more vlogging type walking around because I'm, I have some ideas for some videos. When I take one of my trips to Texas, I might bring y'all along and you know, do this kind of thing. And I don't know, have you ever been to a Bucky's? <laughs> well, I can take you to a Bucky's. There's all sorts of things I could do with this kind of setup. But that's the Crane, uh, the June Crane M3. Kind of worth the money, but you know, posterity will be the judge. We'll see how often I use it. If I end up only using it a few times, then maybe it wasn't worth the money. But I have a feeling once I get the hang of it, I might use it a, 
quite a bit, and in which case it will definitely be worth the money. Got no idea what I'll be talking about next week. I'm going to do a Dr. Wiggo on books because I read a bunch, I got a bunch of books over Christmas and I've read a bunch of them and I, I, I want to share because I think y'all, y'all might like some of the books I've been reading. And those, those, the books video will be infrequent and they will be generally short because I'll talk about like one, one or two authors worth of books only. So maybe one of those next week. I need to do another uh, gear video. Oh, when my new microphone comes in. Remember I told you I ordered a microphone that uh, it, it's still at least a week or two away? When that comes in, I'll do another gear, another gear video on, on camera accessories and things like microphones and talk about what I found trying out all these different microphones over the past months. That's what's coming up. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time, and you'll be as surprised as I am to find out what I'm talking about. Bye-bye.